edition, here's a look at tonight's top stories. Prime Minister Davis calls for Commonwealth unity against climate change in Samoa. Plus, mystery deepens in Grand Bahama as families seek answers for missing loved ones. And later, a Bahamian woman loses her home after placing her mother in an elderly care facility. The details are straight ahead. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition start now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Raven Davis. Thank you so much for tuning in. When the Commonwealth acts as one, it can bend the arc of history. That was the focus of Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis's intervention at the Commonwealth Heads of Government Commonwealth Business Forum in Samoa. The Prime Minister who addressed the forum says the Commonwealth's strength is its diversity and vast talent pool. But he says financial barriers is one of the greatest challenges facing small island developing states. Without adequate funding, how can we invest in the infrastructure, education, and health care that, that are essential for development? How can we support our entrepreneurs, our innovators, and our visionaries if they cannot access the capital they need to bring their idea to life? Imagine the profound injustice of having to shoulder the burden of a climate crisis we did not create a crisis that threatens to swallow our coastlines, devastate our, our culture, and disrupt the very livelihoods of our people. Imagine the shock waves of a global pandemic, knowing that while some nations had seamless access to life-saving vaccines, others faced hurdles that left millions vulnerable and unprotected. This year's meeting is the 27th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The theme of this year's business forum is One Resilient Common Future, Transforming Our Commonwealth. That, the Prime Minister says, is a call to action, challenging the body to be bold. He says the Commonwealth is at a pivotal moment and must adapt to ensure economies are resilient in a changing world. Imagine a network where talent flows freely, where entrepreneurs in Barbados can seamlessly connect with an investor in Kenya or a small business in Trinidad can find partners in India without barriers. <laughs> By breaking down the obstacles that limit trade and innovation and fostering a culture of collaboration, we can ensure that opportunity and success are shared across all of our member states. When we say Commonwealth, let's truly mean a community where wealth knowledge and opportunity are accessible to all. Imagine a Commonwealth that is not just united in name, but united in purpose. In other news, a number of individuals on Grand Bahama remain missing, raising growing concerns among family and friends about their loved ones disappearing without a trace. Tonight, the officer in charge of CID is providing an update. Julanda Thompson Everest reports. There is still no sign of relief for families of individuals reported missing between 2022 and now. Chief Superintendent of Police, Detective Darrell Ware, who oversees crime management operations in the Northern Bahamas, acknowledging the frustration of family and friends. He reassures the public that the Royal Bahamas Police Force is committed to locating the missing persons and notes that a special task force has been assigned to the case and is also working diligently to provide the community with answers. We are currently looking at all missing person uh, matters that have been reported to us over this year and the past years. Uh, the Grand Bahama uh, community has been assisting us greatly with any information they have gathered and they've carried over to us. But we, we again appealing to the public, general public who may have any information related to any person that is missing to reach out to us at uh, 3503106 or any of the nearest police station or any officer or police in the community you deem fit to uh, get the information to us. Detective stresses that police officers cannot do it alone and will need the help of the community. Well, let me say we, we are here, we are serving up the people and we, we, we are doing all within our, on all within our powers to, to bring closure to these matters. And let me say this, a, this is a collective uh, situation where everybody, the general public and us as law enforcement officers, 
to try to bring closure to these matters. It's not a matter where the, the police we want. We are doing all within our powers to try to bring closure, but we must do it in conjunction with the general public and persons who have lost ones that are, are currently missing. The chief superintendent asserts that the public plays a crucial role in ensuring the safety of their loved ones, especially senior citizens at home. When questioned about the concerns regarding a potential serial killer or human trafficking connection to the missing person cases, Ware firmly states that there are no statistics or evidence supporting those claims. He urges the community to remain vigilant and continue assisting law enforcement officers with any information that could aid in the ongoing investigation. We have nothing to suggest something of that sort. We have nothing that no 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 data or no statistics to say we have this type of thing going on or going on in our country. Or all again like I gotta say it, we as need poisons that are not lost in ones and we only have wider right poison being lost in each other. For the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Jolanda Thompson, Everest. Just one station. is a story you will only hear on ZNS. A Bahamian woman loses her home and all rights to her mother after placing her in an elderly care facility. In this investigative report, our Ramiko Knowles tells us that the 30-year-old mother is sharing her story in hopes of receiving justice. 30-year-old Philippa Carey grew up with her grandparents in Bahamia. Sadly, on her birthday last year, October 30th, her grandfather passed away, leaving her solely responsible for caring for her grandmother, Ingrid Carey, who she refers to as her mother. Recently, Philippa received the job offer off island and hired caretakers to look after her mother, whom she says is showing signs of dementia. From I was a little girl. I know her not to be 100%. I mean, she's a sweet person and everything, but she's not 100% there. After accepting the job offer off island, she hired caretakers to look after her mother. Only she says they quit after a few days, citing the difficulty of managing her mother's challenging care needs. They had come for a day or two and we never have asked them again. So when I got the job off, I said, okay, well, mommy, the best place to put you in the home for a little bit, then we go work, make money. And when you're in the home, you'll have that care that you need. In December of 2023, Philippa made the difficult decision to place her mother at the home away from home elderly care facility owned by Murphy Knowles. Unfortunately, that choice took a turn for the worse. A few months later, when Philippa returned home for a visit, she was shocked to find out that she no longer had a home. Murphy Knowles, the owner of the care facility, had moved into her house. I said, where's my mommy? Oh, your mom is inside the home. I said, my mom is inside the home. How, how you get here? She's like, oh, well, I don't have any answers to give you because whatever we're doing is what your mommy requested. I said, how could she request any of this if you're living in our house and she's living inside of the home? It doesn't make sense to me. So she was she didn't want to give me any answers any more answers for her so she closed the door so i went to the police station myself philippa was escorted back to her home by police only to discover that her mother had signed the house over to murphy knowles she signed over her nib pension the full amount she signed over the survivor's death benefit for my father and then she also gave them power of attorney over her i have to rent an airbnb or stay by friends or stay in a hotel just so I can be home. And it's not fair to me because that's the only place I live my whole life. And a stranger came and it just took everything away. The situation escalates even further. One night, Philippa says she received a distressing call from her mother, prompting her to rush to the elderly care facility with emergency medical technicians. However, when they arrived, no answers were given as the owner of the home had legal rights over her mother. The only thing the EMT told me, she was like, go get yourself a lawyer. She said, because in your mom's mental state that she is, it isn't right that somebody could give themselves power turn over and you know nothing about it. Philippa has since hired an attorney, and now all she wants is justice. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Ramiko Knowles. Now, ZNS News reached out to Mervy Knowles, owner of Home Away From Home, for her response regarding the situation involving the Carey family. Knowles confirmed that she is currently residing in the Carey's home, stating that the home's owner pleaded with her to take ownership of the property. After she keeps on pressuring me and she keeps on saying, Ms. Knowles, if you don't take the house, I'm going to give it to somebody else. 
She said, I'm serious about it. I said, are you really, really serious about this? She said, Miss Lord, what I can do with it? I can't take, I, I'm, I take care of the house. I can't take care of nobody. What I can do with it? Then you do doing something. She said, you want it? Okay, Ingrid, let's go. I said, well, who lawyer you want me to go to? And she told me the lawyer. Take her to the lawyer. The lawyer questioned her on every round you can think about. Marvin Knowles explained that multiple medical and psychiatric professionals interviewed the homeowner to ensure she was in a sound state of mind before agreeing to sign over the property. She even did a life insurance also too. Why I wasn't there and put my name on her life insurance. She said, Ms. Knowles, if I should die, I want you to make sure I have a decent burial. She said, do the power of attorney. I said, you want a power of attorney? She said, yes, do it. This was her choice. The psychiatric doctors been there telling me to bring her and they even question her and they said, Ms. Knowles, there's nothing wrong with her. This was Ms. Ingrid choice. I had nothing to do with that. Well, it's an inspiring story. Two brothers on the path to success. 10-year-old Renard Mater and 13-year-old Ronaldo Mater have both been appointed head boys at Sister Mary Patricia Jr. High School and Maurice Moore Primary School, respectively. They shared with our Julanda Thompson Everest how their family, particularly their mother, encouraged them to strive beyond their dreams. At just 10 and 13 years old, Renard and Ronaldo Mater have officially made their marks at their schools by being appointed as head boys. It all began with a speech competition to determine the suitable candidates at Sister Mary Patricia Junior High School and Maurice Moore Primary School. To their surprise, they were both selected for the roles. When I saw my letter, I flipped it open, but I didn't want to open it. And when I finally saw it, head boy, like all of my, everything just flicked off and flicked back on because this is something that I've always wanted. And then I thought it was the deputy, but then I actually was head. And then I was so excited and when my classmates came back, when I came back into the class, my classmates asked me what I got. And then I told them that I was the head boy of the school. And Both brothers have officially been installed in their roles and proudly wear their head boy pins, reflecting on the hard work that has brought them this far. The eldest, Ronaldo, who wasn't in the first category, admitted feeling a bit anxious, but maintained his faith, believing the title was well-deserved. He shares a heartfelt message to his mother. I just was happy, not for myself, but for my mother, because she was, she, she was there for me. She supported me, and she was, she wanted me to get this because I, how, how bad I wanted it. Renard and Ronaldo leave behind these encouraging words for students who may be following in their footsteps. Believe in yourselves, work hard, and never give up on your dreams. With determination and support from your loved ones, you can achieve anything. There will be challenges, but never give up because you can always strive for the top and you can succeed. Even when somebody is holding you down from doing one of your accomplishments or one of your goals, never let them discourage you from what you want to do. Because one time somebody had forced me down and pushed me down from my role as head boy and I never gave up and I showed them that I was the right person for this role. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Jolanda Thompson, Everest. And still to come. The Pro Cathedral of Christ the King celebrating their priest's 40th anniversary in grand style. That story and sports highlights when we return. enough things to worry about. Living in a world that can seem opposite of the things you are trying to accomplish. I mean, I, I can need a little help with this part of this. We're here to let you know that you don't have to go at it alone. Choose peace of mind. Choose comfort. Choose CB. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. Is having a two-day store.
store-wide sale on October 25th and 26th for their two-year anniversary under new ownership. Get up to 25% off on a variety of items, from household to hardware, you name it. Sale hours on Friday will be from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's Dolly Madison's two-year anniversary sale, up to 25% off. You don't want to miss it. Dolly Madison. Join the Ruby Jubilee celebrations honoring Reverend Canon Norman Lightborn on his 40th anniversary of ordination. The banquet is Friday, October 25th, 7 p.m. at the Grand Lacayan Resort. Tickets are $125. The service follows on Sunday, October 27th at 4 p.m. Third Dimension Construction will be closed from Wednesday, October 23rd to Friday, October 25th. Stay tuned in for more information on reopening and exciting updates. Third Dimension thanks you for your support, understanding, and patience. Here at Freeport Decorators, we have hundreds of products for you to choose from. Whether you're in the market for trophies, plaques, rubber stamps, corporate signs, any kind of interior signage, stamps, or seals, where you one-stop shop. We feature glass, acrylic, crystal awards for every occasion. We build all the trophies here on site. Looking for a gift item? We feature pens, key rings, mugs, tumblers, barbecue tools, even bamboo cutting boards. Have something already? Bring it on down. Let us see if we can print that special something on it for you. Need a headstone? Memorialize the memory of your loved one with a beautifully lasered granite marker. Our store hours are Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. We focus on customization. So if you have an idea or a new concept, bring it on down or call us at 352-5557 or even WhatsApp your idea to us at 646-0777 and we will do our best to make your awards and recognition ideas a reality. Your number one team in the North. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better. Welcome back. The Pearl Cathedral of Christ the King is honoring Canon Norman Lightbourne's 40 years of priesthood with a weekend filled with celebrations. To kick off the festivities, committee members are hosting a gala to commemorate the Ruby Jubilee of their beloved priest. Which begins on the 25th, indeed, with, a, with the anniversary banquet um, that will take place here in Grand Bahama at the Isle of Gaia um, Hotel. Um, on, and that will be on the Friday, the 25th of October of this month. And then following that will be a grander celebration of, of, of the Holy Eucharist on the Sunday, um, the 27th, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Will be a Committee members for the event expressing excitement for their priest who has served at a number of churches throughout the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Congregation here at the Pro Cathedral, we are just so happy to be able to celebrate this Ruby Jubilee milestone with him and his family. And we're looking forward to welcoming persons that would have been with him throughout the journey, starting from Turks and Caicos Islands into the islands of the Bahamas, of course. We would love to see persons here in Grand Bahama coming out in full force. Fully excited. 400 persons already confirmed for our gala banquet. So we know it's a big event. In other news, Abaco-based environmental group Friends of the Environment has released a new teacher's resource guide as it continues its efforts to create young environmental stewards. The aim of the organization is to preserve Abaco's environment through education, conservation and research facilitation. The group's outreach coordinator, Lindy Shikari, presenting a number of books to Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson to be shared among her membership. Ecosystems of the Bahamas is designed for high school teachers, but would be appropriate reference material for anyone wishing to learn about the Bahamian environment. The guide features the major Bahamian ecosystems, highlighting key species, ecosystem services, threats, and conservation measures. Specifically for teachers, the guide includes sample classroom and field activities and field trip suggestions. We are very thankful for Mrs. Belinda Wilson here at Bahamas Union of Teachers for assisting us with distributing our guide nationwide. Wilson says the book will be a valuable tool for educators and she's pleased to partner with the group to get it out. I must say that this book I believe is going to go a long way for our teachers, especially those in the field of science and 
and you know that the whole global phenomenon now is climate change. So I believe that this will assist our teachers in being able to teach our children about, like you said, the book highlights the species, the ecosystem, and we look forward to distributing these on behalf of friends and the environment. Switching gears now, the Heroic Group Limited is expanding their production. In March of this year, the company launched their concrete production plant. Now they are moving into block production. Sydney Smith, the brand and community relations lead at Heroic Limited Group, says that with their products, they strive for the best quality. Less than 30 days, we will begin selling blocks. I know that's a highly anticipated product for us at Aurora Concrete and Concrete Products. So I am looking forward to seeing all of our customers, all of our contractors, um, who are really just wanting to see those uh, on the island. Smith says that the block production plant is able to produce around 8,000 blocks per day. I think one of the great things about our plan is we have a high production capacity. We'll be able to produce a thousand blocks per hour. So in a course of a day, we'll be able to use a significant amount of blocks that really will service um, our island and other islands across the Bahamas. And that's a look at stories making news. Jay, what's coming up in sports? Raven, a major tennis tournament set for this weekend <laughs> at the YMC. I hope to see you there on Saturday. Yeah, I'm excited for that. All right, well, sports is up next, but first a look at the local weather forecast. Tonight's weather forecast is brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. Because it's a beautiful <laughs> One of the biggest decisions you will make when remodeling a kitchen is the design choice for your kitchen cabinets. Whether you want your kitchen to look modern or traditional, the Casablanca White Shaker Cabinets will make a sound choice. Stop into Conard Bahamas today and let them enhance your kitchen with the Casablanca White Shaker Cabinets. At Conard Bahamas, they also carry an array of Calicata Quartz countertops. Conard Bahamas, Sandy Port Nassau, Freeport Grand Bahama, Abaco, and Eleuthera. The Grand Bahama Christian Council presents an island-wide crusade Saturday, October 26 at 3 p.m. at Frank's Ice Cream Plaza. Prayer, testimonies, worship, fellowship, the word, and more. Journey to a serene oasis. We all remember the blue tarps after the storm. Let's make sure that we are covered with more than a tarp. Don't allow your investment to be at risk. Protect your investment with one of our insurance policies. Nobody, 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 nobody does it better. This is where it happens. Those moments that impact our lives. Giving you the information that you need this hurricane season. Wherever there is news, we're there.
Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe, and welcome to Sports First in Sports, another major junior national tennis tournament scheduled for this weekend on Grand Bahama. Here's Shane Stubbs with more on that. Over 40 junior tennis players from around the country will descend upon the YMCA this Saturday, October 26th to the 29th for the Focal Junior Tennis Tourney. Coming off the success of the Flawless Construction Tournament, GBTA executive Lisa Clark believes that was just the foundation for an action-packed event this weekend. We have juniors from Exoma, Elutra, Abaco, and of course Nassau. We have the age groups from 12, 14, 16 to 18. And here's Greg LaRota on the implications each match has. And this is... Uh our last tournament for the year on Grand Bahama, where the juniors will have an opportunity to compete for national points. We have three such tournaments uh, on Grand Bahama. Um, the others are held in Nassau, so the local players has to take advantage of this opportunity because they want to get as much points as possible. The tournament kicks off at 8 a.m. For ZNS Total Sports, I'm Shane Stubbs. Next in sports, Bahamian legendary boxer Romeo Brennan was honored in London at the Commonwealth Boxing Council's 70th anniversary. On hand to receive the award on his behalf was Bahamas Boxing Commission Chairman Fred Stirrup. One of the um, top items on the agenda was Romeo Brennan, believed to be the only living former champion of the Commonwealth. Uh, he was honored with a special award, and I was there to receive that on his behalf. Gomeo is 85 and still living in, in Florida. I represented the Bahamas Boxing Commission, of course, spoke and gave remarks on behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. But it was a wonderful occasion, and we appreciate the fact that Gomeo was given his award uh, by the CBC and was able to smell his roses while he's still alive. And finally, in sports over in Bimini, Louis McDonald defeated Gateway in three sets in girls volleyball taking the final and deciding set 15-6. Ladies and gents, that is your quick check on sports. Your Facebook friend of the day is next. Be blessed. Champagne and the Rhythm presents 102.7 The Rhythm turns three, and it's a big performance with Taurus Riley live. Taurus Riley live. Li 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 oh yeah, the hit maker, the reggae icon, Taurus Riley live. Saturday, December 14th, at the Grand Lucayan Ballroom. Doors open at 8 p.m. Showtime at 11 p.m. For 102.7 The Rhythm. Big birthday party with Taurus Riley. Live. Get tickets online now. TheRhythm3.com. And it's a big performance. Taurus Riley. Brought to you by Jay Champagne and The Rhythm. Saturday, December 14th, 102.7 The Rhythm. Turns three with Taurus Riley. Live. It's the battle of the brains, 20 years strong and still going. Powered by Grand Bahama Power, fueling the future with scholarships and new opportunities. I'm Leanna Johns, I'm from LAS, and I want to say thank you to Grand Bahama Power and to Buckeye for giving us this opportunity. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Grand Mama Power Company and Buckeye for providing us the opportunity to get a scholarship. The Battle of the Brains, where school pride meets genius. Your number one team in the North. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better. That concludes the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. On behalf of the entire news team here in the North, I'm Raven Davis. Thanks for watching. A look at the Bahamas Tonight is on your screen. They're coming your way next. This news is brought to you by the new BTC. Fiber is here. Faster, stronger, more reliable. Together, we are unstoppable. Switch today. 
Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, marriage counselors weigh in on the country's declining population marked by fewer marriages, increasing separations, and a shift in faith patterns. Also, a preliminary debrief and evaluation of Oscar's impact on Inagua as officials shift into recovery mode in hopes of swiftly meeting needs. And political leaders continue trading barbs about the Bahama court battle as a former prime minister renews his calls for a commission of inquiry while the government cautions against talking down the country. Details ahead. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. A declining population. That's what the Bahamas is up against based on the findings of the latest census, which pegs that number at 398,165 with an average annual growth rate, the lowest it's been in the past 52 years. That number pegged at 1.2%. According to the 2022 report, more residents congregated to the Berry Islands, New Providence, Acklands, Bimini, Eleuthera, Exuma, Harbor Island, Cat Island, and Andros. And believe it or not, despite being one of the smaller islands per square mile, the Berry Islands percentage increase actually outpaced New Providence's by 3.7 percentage points. Moreover, there were fewer population numbers recorded on Grand Bahama, Abaco, Crooked Island, Inagua, Long Island, San Salvador, Rum Key, and Spanish Eleuthera. The largest decrease, though, was in the southern Bahamas on the islands of Mayaguana and Ragged Island. Statisticians credit births, deaths, and migration as the main components of the population shift. Another significant factor of the 2022 census was the 10-year change in the country's marital status, which decreased from 99,744 people in 2010 to 97,301 in 2022. A decline of 2.5%. However, all other marital status categories saw increases. The never married group increased from 226,028 persons in 2010 to 267,201 in 2022, an 18.2% .2 increase. Also, the widowed marital status group increased from 10,768 persons in 2010 to 11,660 in 2022, which is a 8.3% increase. Additionally, the divorce category increased from 11,452 persons in 2010 to 13,321 persons in 2022. Now, the findings of this recent census only amplifying the conversation about relationships and marriages, and more importantly, how to make them work. Corval Pyfirm has input from a few marriage counselors. Decreasing marriages, increasing separations and divorces are both harmful to the family unit and society, say these counselors. Dr. Tamalia Gibson is a clinical psychologist. Together with her husband, Pastor Matthew Gibson, they work with married couples to help strengthen their unions. News that marriages are on the decline has her concerned, but not completely surprised. But we don't think about how do I um, instill the skills now that I need to prepare for a healthy, long, happy marriage. Pastor Brown believes there is one main factor driving this trend. A lot of people don't realize that they think that infidelity um, tears up a marriage. They think that you know, uh, money is one of the te tears up a marriage, but one of the biggest and one of the strongest factors is the breakdown of communication. Apostle Utah Taylor Rule also counsels couples. He says issues with finances seem to hurt relationships most, but he's calling on couples to get closer to God. We will continue to see combustion or broke up in marriages. We will see a lot of separations because we are doing it our way and not God's way. He worries about this data's overall societal impact. I think what we need to do is we need to focus on the family and not focus on the gender. Don't focus on the male, don't focus on the female. Focus on the family. The rate, um, even 
those who I come in contact with daily or who reach out to me for counseling and seeing so many uh, marriages are in trouble. They're legally separated or not legally separated, uh, just holding on by a thread. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Corval Pyfirm. Meantime, a breakdown in the nuclear family leading to a serious shift in dynamics at the Department of Social Services, giving rise to an increasing number of people requesting assistance with food and temporary shelter. In the case of the latter, the figure is said to have doubled within the last three months of July to September. But according to Assistant Social Services Director for Community Support, Shirley Kelly, what's equally disturbing is a new development in recent years. Men between the ages of 40 and 60 years are applying for help. I feel that men, sometimes a lot of men are going through various challenges in their personal lives and sometimes men may not really don't, ha, can't properly handle the stresses and the strains mm -hmm. that life will have mm -hmm. to put on, on them. And so this is where we see and persons coming in actually for shelter. And so some of the men may have had made decisions in their lives, would have had challenges mm. with maybe drugs or alcohol and made some choices and maybe they might have um, relationship problems with their families, etc. And so then they're caught at an age where they cannot seem to handle the stresses of life and so they turn to us. Some of them are working um, and um, most of them are not working. Now, as for the department's food assistance program, clients have a one-year grace period. In the case of a single person, that's $92 a month. For a person with a family of up to five, that figure, of course, climbs to $208. When you talk about persons who are working, a lot of the persons who are working make minimum wage, like was mentioned earlier, and also you have persons who may have a government in job or a job in a private firm but their salary is completely maxed out. Bahamians live a really good life if you say it like that. They like to have a car, they like to have things. That's us. So you have persons who would have gone to the bank to purchase furniture, to buy a car, to, to um, add um, other things to their house just for decoration or to take a vacation, or to buy school supplies or whatever. We're going to shift our attention now to Oscar. Government officials on the ground today assessing the damage the Atlantic's smallest recorded hurricane left in its wake. Devonte Hanna and his cameraman Victor Adley are on the island for us. Here's that story. Tonight, Matthew Town and Nag were spared for major damage caused by Hurricane Oscar. Now the work of full recovery begins. This is residents had less than 24 hours to prepare for the category one storm with winds of up to 80 miles per hour. The burnt felt early Sunday morning. About three o'clock, the rain came hard and we were hearing thunder, you know, lightning. So looking outside, there was nothing you could see, you know, other than the rain going in its dark. I hear the whistling and the, like the train. And I don't know if you see on social media, talk, TikTok, when you talk, when they're showing these little um, tornadoes and these funny sounds they're having, we actually was hearing that. And I'm like, boy, this is crazy. The Disaster Risk Management Authority considers the damage level one. The size Island Administrator Gilbert reported flooding in several areas and minor structural damage. We addressed about 169 homes. Out of that, you had roughly about 92 of those homes had roof damages done. Some even left to evacuate their homes like a teacher, according to the principal of the local comprehensive school. And by the end of the storm, the shelter's population was at 21. She had some water coming into her home, and she was able to resort at the doctor's residence, which is next door. The residents say even after the storm passed, they got torrential downpour, especially here in this area that caused it to flood out. Now, they say that some residents could reportedly be trapped inside their homes behind this area. So what they decided to do was get this six-inch water pump to pump the water from this area and send it out into the sea. They say that they've been doing this process since the passage of the storm. And to clear up an area, it could take about three days. Sunday after after the wind stopped, it was just rain, rain, rain until Monday about midday. This is our third spot. Uh, two other sites I believe they will take you all to. And you will see what we 
dead there. With the island's power and water supply fluctuating, the minister responsible for disaster preparedness, the Honorable Leon Lundy, is pleased to find only minor damage on the island following what meteorologists called a surprise storm. No lives were lost. And although some properties have been damaged, the preparation and quick response allowed residents to evacuate or seek shelter in a timely manner. Hurricane Oscar has now dissipated into a tropical cyclone. A subsequent all-clear has been given for the islands of the central and southeastern Bahamas. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Devonte Hanna. Now ahead of today's assessment, the disaster risk management's response to the storm and effort to keep impacts, residents impacted safe, details in the House of Assembly. With that angle, we go now to our call of Palma. Our actions were strategic, coordinated, and focused on ensuring that every possible measure was taken to protect lives and property. Proud as a peacock of a job well done is how the minister responsible for the Disaster Risk Management Authority, DRM, the Honorable Leon Nundi is feeling, having led efforts before and during the passage of Tropical Cyclone Oscar. The DRM, he says, was quick in its response and calculated in its actions with one objective in mind, saving lives. We acted immediately, Madam Speaker. Within hours, the DRM authority had mobilized its technical teams and issued our first public alert, placing Mayor Guano, Crooked Island, Acklands, Long Key, and Inagua under a tropical storm warning. We did not wait. We did not hesitate, Madam Speaker. We held a meeting at 1.30 p.m. with island administrators and other key partners and ESF personnel to discuss the storm and its threat to the southern islands. By 3 p.m. that afternoon, the warning had escalated to a hurricane warning for the southeastern Bahamas. Our team moved swiftly. The Southeastern Incident Command Center were activated. The National Emergency Operations Center was partially opened. And by 6.30 p.m., we briefed the nation along with the acting prime minister through a press conference at the DRM Operations Center. Throughout the night, we remained in constant communication with the island administrator and his teams. From the moment a tropical storm was formed near the Bahamas, Minister Lundy says the DRM was on high alert. Shelters were prepared and local disaster plans were set into motion. Together, we ensured that no island was left behind in our preparations. This is not where our efforts ended. Late Saturday, the DRM leadership met with a team from SuperValue to procure relief items for potentially impacted islands. Those items of hygiene kits, non-perishables and water were distributed to residents on impacted islands. For The Bahamas Tonight, I'm Carla Palmer. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the national report this morning in a moment. At Commonwealth Bank, we offer affordable and flexible choices to get you back to financial fitness. Our personalized debt consolidation solution is built to fit any financial situation. One easy to handle monthly payment reduces your monthly expenses and gets you back on track to savings. Life is great when you're not weighed down by debt. Consolidate and live your best life with Commonwealth Bank, your leader in personal banking services. Family fries and four biscuits that feeds four. A KFC Deluxe Bucket with ten pieces of delicious chicken. Two larger sides and four biscuits that feeds four to six. Or a KFC Party Bucket with 15 pieces of our chicken. Three larger sides and six biscuits that feeds six. And we'll handle additions, plates, and utensils included. So you can lick your fingers and beat. KFC knows value and it's finger licking good. With BTC's Crystal Clear mobile service, stay connected seamlessly, whether on land or at sea. Our reliable postpaid plans keep your loved ones closer, no matter where life takes you.
From paradise to paradise, Bahamas Air invites you to embark on a seamless island journey from the sun-kissed coast of Nassau, the Bahamas, to the rhythmic shores of Montego Bay, Jamaica. Soar high above a turquoise tapestry on the most trusted airline in the Caribbean. Our inaugural flight takes wing on November 17th, 2024. Don't delay. Book your idyllic escape today. of the news is brought to you by Bahamas Striping Group of Companies. You're looking at a shot of Marlborough and West Bay Streets near the British Colonial Hotel. Welcome back. Former Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, continuing his calls for a commission of inquiry into the Davis administration's handling of crime and now most recently the Bahamar project. He's now calling on the government to publicly address the recent U.S. court judgment siding with the project's original developer, Sarkis Ismerlian. Last week, a U.S. judge awarded Ismerlian more than $1.5 billion for what the court determined Ismerlian lost after his deal with the China Construction America company to develop the Cable Beach property tanked back in 2015. Now, the matter, the former prime minister argues, is damaging the country's reputation. Well, I've said before that we need a proper independent investigation. Um, I think we need a, a commission inquiry to look. The Bahamas is getting a black eye. We're getting a black eye over this entire event. The Bahamas needs, we need to sit down and we need a purging. We need to reset the button. We need a purging so that we can reset the button and move forward a new Bahamas. Acting Prime Minister the Honorable Chester Cooper responding directly to the former Prime Minister cautioning he and the opposition against talking down the Bahamas. Mr. Cooper maintains investor confidence in the Bahamas remains high. Foreign direct investment is good for uh, the growth of our economy and it's good for the Bahamian people and therefore anyone who seek to to talk down the economy is not acting in the best interests of our country. Shifting our attention now, a 66-year-old woman reportedly fell overboard from a Taylor Swift-themed Royal Caribbean cruise ship off the Bahamas Tuesday night. The U.S. Coast Guard reporting this afternoon that it was suspending its search. The agency assisted the Royal Bahamas Defense Force in the search for the woman who fell from the allure of the seas around 9.40 p.m. when the ship was about 17 miles north of Nassau. The Coast Guard sent an HC sent an HC144 airplane crew and an MH65 dolphin helicopter crew from Air Station Miami. Well, the National Insurance Board to host the 32nd Caribbean Community Heads of Social Security Organizations meeting October 28th through November 1st. Chairman Philip McKenzie says it's no coincidence the board is spearheading the event on its 50th anniversary. It is a deliberate uh, demonstration of how our rich legacy over the pa past five decades fuels our commitment to driving social security innovation and policy in the future, both locally and across the region. Our involvement in these discussions is, is especially important as issues such as climate change, shifting demographics, global pandemics, and rapidly advancing technology continue to pose significant challenges to social security systems. Co-chair Dr. Tammy Francis says the five-day event promises a wide range of activities for local and international attendees. A robust agenda is planned, 
including workshops designed for social security professionals and high-level closed meetings and the annual business meeting for attending delegates. Together, we are working to ensure seamless arrangements for transportation, security, travel, media coverage, IT logistics, and hospitality, all aimed at delivering an efficient and impactful experience for our regional counterparts. A stay with us on the beat is after the break. This portion of the news is brought to you by Folk Hall Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. All hand on a deal available only at Marco Southwest, Prince Charles, Village Road, and Robinson Road. Fine, let me see what it's about. I'll take 20 of those, please. Hey, wait. You good? Yeah, bro, Marcos, get this new deal. Get yourself a large one-topping pizza for only $10. $10? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, I need 30 of them $10 carry on pizza deal, please. One of the biggest decisions you will make when remodeling a kitchen is the design choice for your kitchen cabinets. Whether you want your kitchen to look modern or traditional, the Casablanca White Shaker Cabinets will make a sound choice. Stop into Connors Bahamas today and let them enhance your kitchen with the Casablanca White Shaker Cabinets. At Connors Bahamas, they also carry an array of Calicata Quartz countertops. Connors Bahamas, Sandy Port, Nassau, Freeport, Grand Bahama, Abaco, and Eleuthera. A decade ago, the Bahamas Striping Group of Companies was birthed out of a passion to change the way we travel. From only a $5,000 grant, the tenacity and work ethic has propelled BSGC to one of the leading road management companies in the Caribbean. We pride ourselves on going the extra mile where others won't through the use of our state-of-the-art equipment and our certified team. Although the success is commendable, the road has been long. Yet, the mission continues in striving to be a world-class organization ran by Bahamians for Bahamians. With the help of our experienced and hardworking team, we at the Bahamas Striping Group of Companies are committed to making a difference one road at a time. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station. Open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. If you plan on purchasing a Japanese car online, beware. Officials sounding the alarm over a disturbing uptick in fraudulent activities. Desmond Saunders tells us more in this week's Consumer Choice Report. Bahamian consumers now the target of scammers purporting to be legitimate representatives of Japanese vehicles. A disturbing trend that has officials at the Bahamas Customs Department concerned. Chief Customs Officer Albert Roll. There's a new practice whereby persons in Japan would send persons in the Bahamas advertisement on their WhatsApp phone. And once they get those WhatsApp, they can talk with that, they can talk with the agent and then they send funds to the agent and that's when we find <clears throat> that we have money sent and car doesn't come and then the Bahamian persons just lose their monies. Seven cases of fraudulent transactions have been reported to Customs and Police so far for the year. The Customs Chief advising residents to remain vigilant to avoid significant financial losses. What we advise people to do is to go back to the old practice where you go online, register with one of the major Japanese sites, that way you're more safeguarded. As opposed to the WhatsApp, you send your monies and the person can delete their phone number and no contact. It also helps to retain all receipts, documents and communications of transactions. Remember to use secure payment methods when purchasing your vehicle online. When in doubt, verify or cancel 
And if a purchase seems too good to be true, chances are it's a scam. And fact check everything before making payment on any goods or services. Go on the major site, register with their company. Then they will choose a car that's less than 10 years old. Once they choose that car, they will get a performer invoice, which they can take the performer invoice to the bank or do an online payment. Once they've done that and the payment is successful, the vendor in, the, in Japan will now send them an email showing them that the payment was accepted and, to, and then they will in turn now send them original documentation. They'll get a space on the vehicle vessel to have the car shipped. And once the car is shipped and it arrives, you just get a custom broker and let them prepare your documentation for clearance. Desmond Saunders, The Bahamas Tonight. And that very same Desmond Saunders is sitting in for our Marcellus Hall along with, alongside rather, our LaDawn Davis. Both of them will give us a sneak peek of Access Now. Macusla Black Friday is just a month away, but let me tell you, all I keep hearing is deals, deals, and more deals. I'm sure you're excited about deals as well. But I have Desmond here. I know Desmond, you're 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 interested in saving money. Yes, you know, Leno is yes. here. Leno, they're gonna be here later on in the show to talk us a little bit more about how we can save money. But just saving money, are you gonna be spending? Well, saving money, something <laughs> I have to do more of. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that that segment. Macusla, I know you're gonna be spending, right? You're gonna be spending. <laughs> Not talking about it, but Desmond <laughs> seems to be getting a jump start on his New Year's resolutions. But stay with us. The National Report returns after the break. Health is the greatest gift. That's where we come in. Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies is the premier distributor of medical equipment, as well as medical and surgical consumables. Our engineers are always on hand, providing top care service that saves lives. We carry a wide selection of over-the-counter and prescription items, IV fluids, and other injections. Our products are state-of-the-art, and our entire team stays on top of cutting-edge technology. With more than two decades of dedicated service, Bahamas Medical and Surgical Supplies continues to be a trendsetter and innovator in healthcare. We have set ourselves apart by truly caring for our customers. We understand the intricacies of healthcare and we produce spectacular results. We cherish our partnerships and nurture our friendships as we continue on our quest to help everyone maintain that wonderful gift of good health. Find us on 9th Fifth Terrace Centerville and now located in the Lucaya Shopping Center of Freeport, Grand Bahama. Fashion was something that I've always loved. I always, as a child, loved to see women just impeccably dressed. But my thing was drawing the looks and mixing colors, and fashion was in my blood. I put my personality into my passion. Well, the Fabric of Hope was inspired by my father, and my father had cancer, and I would go with him to treatments and seeing everybody just look despondent and dreary. And I was like, wow, like, God, like, I'm only a fashion designer, like, what can I do to assist these people? I know God had me to create it to inspire uh, persons with cancer or any illness that there's hope. It's been in my heart for a couple of days to speak to the older women who may feel that I'm 40, what can I do? I'm 50, what can I do? And that's when the fire in us kicks in. So take that idea that God has given you and put it to use. This is where it all begins. Empowered women empower women. And that does it for the National Report. But stay close. The Bahamas Tonight continues with Access Now. Announcement is brought to you by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. Mathematics is a subject that for many comes with anxieties. A recent 10-year review of the results of the GLAT indicates a 